Hello, we're on day two of the Precious Metal Summit here in Zurich, and I'm with Giles Dodd, the exploration manager of All Mega Metals, formerly Matador Mining. Giles, good to see you. Thanks for having me, Peter. No, more than welcome. Um, look, excited to talk to you. I love talking to Sam, but obviously he, he is an engineer at heart, and this is an exploration <laughs> place. I'm yeah. glad to be talking to one of the guys who has boots on the ground. Um, I think most people are familiar with the Matador story, but maybe if, maybe we can just do a quick 30 seconds on what it is. Yep. Obviously, you're in Newfoundland, gold exploration, a bit of copper recently that you've been finding yep. as well. Just a little bit of who you are, and then we'll dive in. Yeah, we're primarily a gold exploration company based in Newfoundland in Canada. Uh, been on the island there since 2018. Started off as Matador Mining, recently transitioned name and getting a TSX listing. We're now in Mega Metals, but same core of the business there is uh, finding the next big deposits in Newfoundland. Good. All right. Uh, look, and also I've just had a chat with your colleague, you've, you've just brought someone yep. else in as well, uh, maybe just talk a little bit about him. Yeah, uh, yeah, recently uh, Rick Greenwood, our new VP of Exploration, he's been with us for about a month now. He's just recently come over from Kinross, he was with uh, Great Bear from day one of that discovery there, so we're really excited to have him on the team. Yeah. He's seen big deposits, he's discovered them and he knows good. the ingredients for it. Good, good, good. And, good. He's, a, and he's a Newfoundlander at heart and he's returning. Well, home. exactly, yeah, it's <laughs> nice to have local opportunities for people yep. to come, it's sort of starting to see that in the UK now, which is nice. Um, okay, look, I think the, the main thing at the moment is I, I really wanted to get my head around the exploration strategy for yep. 2025 in particular, because I think we've seen this, and it was in, we were talking just before this, and we've seen this transition from sort of, if you look on the map, sort of more towards the south, towards yep. the coast and the easier access parts and sort of moving up and up and up. You, obviously, Malachite was a lot of the focus this year. Yep. Um, I, I guess for those looking at the story, thinking, well, all we heard about was Malachite for a year straight, and now we're starting to hear about Bunker Hill. Maybe you can put people at ease as to why that might be. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, Malachite's been our focus in the green fields the last few years. Uh, we've had smaller capital deploy, and, and our pr primary focus has been in that area. But in the background, we've been working up these targets from Bunker Hill intersection as well. The company hasn't had the opportunity to get boots on the ground there systematically yet, but this field season was our first time we've deployed personnel up there and, and things are really encouraging. You know, we're, we're getting high grade copper and gold samples in outcrop. Um, yeah, further along at intersection, we've done large till surveys and seeing a lot of gold in till, but we've been working up these targets for years, so we finally got up there. So it hasn't been taking any attention away from Malachite or the resource corridor. And uh, we had a targeting workshop in June this year and, and, and everything in our conceptual through to early stage targets like Bunk Hill and Intersection were ranking really high as well. So it was good to get there and see the results to back our theories as to why there may be large mineral deposits there. Okay, all right. Well, look, because it, it, to me it sounds like Bunker Hill is now taken centre stage. It sounds like this is, this is where you're probably most likely to find a deposit of scale. And it's not just because it seemed with Malachite as well to a certain extent, it was more about the second third order structure, it was more structurally it looked like it had the right ingredients. Would that be fair to say? Whereas Bunker Hill is actually some underlying data now to support there is a mineralized system. Yeah. There. Yeah, so they both they both got their unique characters. They're both structurally complex. Malachite is on the bend of a large shear zone, so so from that you will get these subsidiary second, third, fourth order displays and structures. But then as you go around the bend to Bunker Hill, the shear zone is now east west and that is uh, that is opposing to the rest of that shear zone in Newfoundland. So these, these kind of almost orthogonal features on these shear zones do allow for that dilation, and dilation is what we want for the fluid flow and, and the mineralizing system to ingress. So yeah, they've both got their unique structural characteristics, but... Okay, but, but so, so tell me a little bit more about Bunker Hill then. So, so what, is the, what are the positive signs that you've seen so far for you to say, right, we've got, because you've just done a raise as well, yep. right? You, you just did, you've got about 16 million in the bank. Yep. So of which is flow through, so correct. That's you know exploration money that needs to be spent. So there's going to be a big campaign, I'd assume, next year. Yes. Um, how are you going to be deploying that on Bunk Hill, and why have you decided that it's got to be on Bunk Hill versus other areas yeah. of the license? Well, so for Bunker Hill this year, we got up first pass prospecting and mapping. We had a few historical samples in the database we wanted to verify. So we now over that kind of 15 kilometre stretch of Bunker Hill. Wherever there is outcrop in a in a terrain that is covered predominantly by glacial till, we are, you know, we're seeing high grade gold in the west, 18 grams per ton outcropping. 10 kilometres over to, to the nitty gritty showing, we're getting high grade copper up to 17% in our in our assays as well, high silver values. So we're actually seeing like the physical evidence in outcrop, which which is just as compelling as you can get. Yeah. So so what we're done to deploy there is 
around those areas of the of the showings is do some walk some kind of scout drill fences through there so we can understand the stratigraphy and the structure but also over those key showings and key structural areas in the broader footprint do the rc base of till bottom of hole drilling as well so we can put together that that bedrock geology map below the cover the alteration map the geochemistry map and really vector in on some high priority drill targets there as well because we don't think it's coincidental that every everywhere there's there's erosion of the till and there's exposure, there's, there's high-grade gold or copper. Okay. And that, so, that just increases your confidence to point a drill at. Yeah, oh, 100%, yeah. yeah. And, and you're, so this is 100% outcrop, these aren't boulders or anything, this is outcrop? No, no there, there is boulders and float around, but we have yeah. found the outcrop. Okay. Yeah. All right, so what's your current interpretation as to what's under the till then based on the outcrop? that you'll see? Well, we're currently working on that. Um, you know, we, we've been able to do three or four limited mapping traverses this summer where, where the erosional level allows that, but we've also just been in receipt of our high, resolu high resolution geophysical survey there. So we did a 60 metre spaced flight survey this summer and we're, we're actually now starting to domain the rock types we've seen on the traverses to the mag and then trying to piece together all the historical work that's been done there in government maps and, and get a preliminary interp, but that'll really go to the next level with the RC bottom of the hole program. Okay, all right, and structurally, you were talking about uh, different degrees in terms of facing, but how does this look different to Malachite or even the existing resource zone? Because obviously there's quite a lot of copper that you're saying that you're finding as well, right? Yeah. So it seems very different to what you have found in the past. It does, it does. It's very interesting. So at Bunker Hill, we, we, we see kind of essentially two different types of mineralising systems. Um, so you go all the way back down the belt to, belt to central zone, they're, they're very classic kind of mesothermal orogenic veins. And then as we move up, we're getting more epizonal, shallower in the crust, uh, kind of, and then you get a different metal signature. So the copper's becoming a bit more rich, but we still, we, we believe there's two different systems there. One's got the high grade gold and then one's got the high grade copper and silver. Okay. But am I right in thinking this is all sedimentary hosted as well? So are you, are you expecting big blowout zones where you'll find relatively large deposits or are you more expecting sort of vein type deposits? That well, the, the sedimentary domain at Bunker Hill actually blows out again in that east-west portion where the shear zone, where the shear zone opens up and, and that is the, the same sedimentary domain that the central zone deposits are hosted in. But also a lot of these showings where we're seeing even the high-grade gold in the west and the high-grade copper in the east, they're actually held up in uh, everything from metagranites through to, through to kind of kind of fine grain felsic intrusive such as the window glass hill down at our central zone deposit. Mm. So what we're seeing is actually hosted in a variety of lithology types which opens up the targeting a lot more. Okay. And um, what's um what's the what's the new kid sort of saying, the, the, the geo from Kinross, what's the new kid on the block? <laughs> new kid on the block, yeah. Uh, he's really excited. He's yeah. uh he's obviously been following the story and a few other companies on the island since yeah. since Newfoundland's where he's from but he, he, he even said before he came here when he was just looking at Matador at the time, he was like, he loved that Bunker Hill area. And yeah, and yeah so he, he's in full support of the targeting we did prior to him being there, and now he's seeing the data as well, and he's full support of, of why we're going there. Okay, well, talk to me about what the campaign might look like over the next 12 months, because you mentioned another project earlier as well, which was Intersection. And yep. When I look on the map of the licensing that you have, you have um, you have the Cape Race here, yep. and then you've got the Hermitage for that show, right? Yep. And intersection is sort of where them two splay off from each other. Correct. Yeah. And I've, I, I think anyone would look at that map and go, "Well, that 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 looks interesting." Uh, nope. So, <laughs> any work on intersection, or is this really a year to focus on Bunk Hill? Oh, there'll be work on intersection. So this summer we just completed a very broad reconnaissance till survey there, like 800 yeah. metre space lines, 100 metre space stations, just to get a feel for what, what, the, what the signature could be in that area. Um, anything sizeable will have a till signature on that spacing as well. And so we walked away with four priority target areas out of that. They're in key kind of structural or lithological positions. Yep. So we will be doing some follow-up work there for sure. We need to get comprehensive prospecting to walk around even though there's a lot of cover we might find something but we're also I was going to say have you found any outcrop at intersection at all there's hardly any when we're walking no. over it I walked over a lot of it myself and there's not much at all <laughs> yeah, okay. but uh, so we'll, we'll plan some, uh, some, some scout drill. diamond drill hole through it as well okay. just to get a feel for the stratigraphy and structure um, we'll be doing geophysical surveys at Hermitage to increase the resolution there uh, we're planning to do some EM surveys over the whole resource corridor or area at Cape Ray. Yep. Target the graphitic schist horizon that the ore is hosted in there. Because uh, a lot of that area south of the deposit still hasn't had any modern exploration in it as well. So we'll be seeing 
from, from now until next Christmas, we'll be seeing a, a very broad variety of programs over a lot of our project blocks from Cape Ray to Malachite, Bunker Hill, Intersection, Hermitage, and our Blue Cove property as well. We'll be doing some first boots on the ground mapping and prospecting. That's the copper target, right? Yes. That you just acquired recently, right? Okay. All right. Well, look, I, I, rather than because we're limited on time, I won't go on to that yep. one just yet because it's it's down the list of priorities yep. I, I yep. feel at the moment. But um, okay. So some boots on the ground at intersection, doing some mapping, potentially some scout drilling. Like I said, you've got 12 million to spend. I'm assuming the vast majority of that will be on Bunker Hill. Maybe you can just tell us a little bit of what that campaign will look like. Yeah, so, so this winter we'll start at Bunker Hill. We'll do the, the RC bottom of hole base of till program. We'll have a diamond drill up there as well to follow up on, on some of the key priority areas we pick from that, but also drill under these historic and, and recently discovered showings that we've got there in outcrop. So nice. that'll help tie in the structural and stratigraphy setting of the area. So that'll, that'll go all winter. We'll, we'll get out there for the spring melt. We'll get there, we'll be in receipt of the assays, do our interpretation, and then plan any subsequent follow-up diamond drilling in that area as well. Um, and then some of our areas in Malachite, we've identified as, as good drill targets. We just want to get in there and do some IP geophysical kind of surveys first, just to help really hone in on where to put that drill, because they're, they're just such large areas. Yeah, 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 okay. But it, it's funny though, isn't it? Because obviously if you're getting this such high grade gold at Bunker Hill and I mean 17% copper you, you'd think it needs to be coming from somewhere right I mean it hasn't yeah. <laughs> it, uh, I, I, I don't, it's very early to say but it, it surely those indications you guys must be getting pretty excited by this now it's you you've been it's, it's hard work this early stage exploration sort of working up these targets yeah. to a point where they're drill ready to finally have some data that suggests you've got some seriously good grade mineralization i think uh, it, what what a b2 gold think obviously you do that your sessions with them yeah was the last one were they involved in the last one in june as well yep yeah yeah we how, had how are they looking at bunker hill based on the data that's available oh they're they're just as excited as us you know yeah. so they they got they got full access to our data we have we have regular meetings we had two of their geologists come over for our targeting workshop in june wow. so yeah we're, we're all on the same page with that okay. and have regular meetings and follow-ups as well so Good. yeah we're and we're just really excited as a company like you know we get there we have that conceptual idea we get there after a few years of thinking about it getting out of the resource corridor moving on from malachite up the belt doing our work programs kind of systematically building up the pipeline but but to get there for the first time in a summer and find all this in outcrop is really exciting. Yeah, good. And it's, it's really remote, so it's been hard for us to get there over the years, but the, the reward is paying off. Good. Um, last thing I did want to talk to you about was actually Hermitage, because I've, I've always yep. liked that as a target. Yep. It's a lot of Pathfinder elements. It's the largest antimony anomaly on the island, yep. um, in Newfoundland, sorry. What, what's the plan with Hermitage? Because I'd love to go and see, I'd love to see some actual data coming back yep. from that. I'm sure you'd find some interesting stuff over there, but it's a, again, it's a big area to, to, to go and map, right? Yeah, no, I agree. So um, Hermitage this year, it seemed a little bit quieter on the side of things. We did a lot of, lot of groundwork there. So we got uh, Brett Davis, a structural consultant geologist, back to the project again. He went down there and we've done some mapping traverses. So we're starting to tie together that kind of structural and kinematical history there. And uh, currently we are flying, uh, we're about to deploy a geophysical airborne magnetic survey over that. So, okay. so we'll have that high resolution magnetics, we'll have the, the mapping from, from Brett and the structural interpretation to overlay onto that, then also from our prospecting campaigns in 2023. So, so by interlay, integrating those three data sets there, we'll be able to develop some nice targeting next year where we, we will go in and do some kind of scout drill holes across there, start tying in that stratigraphy and structure 3D and get a good feel for the project. Okay. So yeah, there's been a few years of getting the legwork up there, but we're, we're excited to move on to the next stage. Okay, so th this is, next year is a big year for you guys, year, essentially. Yeah. You've got scout drilling going on at Intersection, Hermitage. Will you go back, obviously you're doing a lot of drilling, um, both RC and, and Diamond yep. uh, at Bunker Hill. You've got some more targets that you want to go and test at Malachite. Uh, resource Zone, what, what's happening there? Any Anything that we can be expecting over the next 12 months, sir? Yeah, so we're looking at deploying a, an airborne EM survey over that to map out the graphitic schist horizon. Okay. And that's what, what the majority of the, the, the deposit is hosted in there in the Windsor Point group. So we're going we're to map out these horizons, come up with some high priority drill targets in there. Away from the resource body, of course, uh, south of the resource, uh, there's, there's large areas that just have not seen any historical or modern exploration. So we're, we're currently targeting up one of those areas now. We'll, we'll blanket that whole area in the EM survey and see 
and see where we can put some drill holes. Okay. Well, there's a lot of work to be done. Have you, have you got enough team members? Have you got enough, obviously you've got the money now, but yep. have you got enough boots on the ground to be able to cut? There's a lot of ground to cover here, by the sounds of it. There, there is a lot of ground to cover. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're, we've got a pretty, uh, we've got a really strong team internally now with, with Rick coming on board. Uh, we've got, there's about six geologists of a space in Newfoundland full time now. And uh, yeah, well, obviously we'll have to start staff up for, for next season, but, yeah. but we've got great access to a great knowledgeable workforce there in Newfoundland. And Good. Uh, yeah. yeah, we're really excited to have a large team next year. Good, thank you very much for your time. Pleasure, thanks Peter. Cheers.